you may have made up. Uh, I was definitely overwhelmed with the interest. I think it's going to be an awesome group. So I just wanted to like treat this first meetup as kind of just an experiment and see how things how things went, see what the turnout was like, um, and then figure out what we want to do for like the next few meetups. So uh, I guess let me just talk a little bit about myself and, and, and what I'm working on related to Angular. Uh, I've been a huge fan of Angular, although I pretty much just started using it last summer. Uh, but I picked it up and pretty much fell in love with it. And I realized it was going to be huge. Uh, and we ended up basically building our whole business on it. So it's definitely been something that's kind of changed my life in the last six months, which kind of, kind of sounds funny uh, to say, but JavaScript framework changed my life. Uh, <laughs> But it kind of has, and I think it's changed a lot of people's lives. And I think people who are getting on board right now are really smart because they're getting um, they're getting into a job market that's very eager for their skill sets and is you know paying well, and you get to work on a lot of really interesting stuff. So I think Angular is awesome, and I wanted to kind of help foster the community here because we definitely had. Uh, Definitely had a lot of people that I ran into that use Angular here, but no like cohesive group. Um, and it seemed like it overlapped with the JavaScript meetup, but in a bad way, in the sense that we were always stuck on like Hello World. And Hello World is like 10% of Angular. Like this is the easiest part. And then it gets into like the roller coaster of death and happiness <laughs> and death again. Like it's very, very intense. So I wanted to kind of do a meetup that was more not just not just advanced, but a little more like further along and gotten some more uh, deep concepts. So uh, on that note, I, I wanted to just do a quick poll and see like how many people here are are you know beginners of Angular or, or intermediate. So I guess would you say if you're raise your hand if you uh, would say you're an Angular beginner? Okay, so a lot of you intermediate, advanced. Just raise your hand, Adam. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, okay, let's get to know. Um, I think we'll probably start out with more beginner to uh, topics and then slowly become hopefully more advanced as a group, which will be awesome. Because there's a lot of things like I'm learning new stuff every day. Uh, the community is still young, but it's growing quickly. So there's a lot of cool projects that we all haven't heard of, that I haven't heard of, that we can share. So, um, so yeah, in terms of the actual meetup, the structure I wanted to follow was to keep two to three presentations a time. So now that we've kind of got the ball rolling, hopefully I'll get more people like stepping up and wanting to present. I think today we have three, which is awesome, myself included. So that's great. Uh, I want to keep them kind of short, like 20 minutes at the very most. Like I have a terrible attention span, and so I can't stand when like things go on too long. So like 20 minutes of talking, and then like 10 minutes of Q&A would be perfect. Uh, I want to give people here an opportunity to like talk about hiring opportunities for Angular developers, if there are any. Um, so we'll probably do that after, uh, I guess we can do that next if anyone has anything, but we'll get to that. Uh, I want to leave a little bit of room for people not to present, but if you wanted to share something that's cool, uh, that you built, that someone else built, that you think the group would like, uh, <clears throat> definitely want to leave some room for that. Um, then we'll go into presentations, but over the longer term, I'd like to see a mailing list start up only about Angular. So we'll, we'll see how that goes. Um, that might be in the meetup like program, or it might be separate, like it, like it's on the site. So we'll uh, we'll be kind of thinking about that over the next few weeks. But I want to see a mailing list set up, and then you know maybe do more meetups related to Angular over time, uh, because like presentations are great, but uh, we can do things like hackathons or, um, uh, you know, open source hacking, things like that. So there's a lot of stuff we could do. Question? Yeah. Okay. I'm a member of Man Fox. One of the first things we do at our meetings is, uh, who's got a problem? We throw the problem on the on the screen, and we like brainstorm and try to fix it. Fun. Uh, yeah. We do that every every meeting. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> you know, somebody's got something they can't figure out, or this sure. isn't working right, or there's some really weird SQL stuff that isn't working. Okay. Well, yeah, I'm just throwing it out. It's probably a lot harder to do with this many people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
we have to involve kind of people. Well, maybe we can put that up on the agenda for next time, and then some people can like. You are maybe break into yeah. smaller groups of people who've got some kind of issue that they they're having a lot of trouble with. Sure, sure. And the I mean, mailing list would be good for that. that I have yeah. <laughs> well, the ang the mailing list would also be really good for that because then you could just email whatever. Like that would be a perfect thing for the group. Um, but we could definitely do it at, at these as well. If someone has a burning desire to do that today, like feel free. Otherwise, we'll maybe put that on the list for next time. That sounds fun. So, um, yeah, that's pretty much all I had for the intro. Uh, over time, we'll probably want to think about sponsors too. So, if, if you have a company or, or you work for a company that like to sponsor, uh, we could probably, you know, I want to see what the turnout was going to be before we did anything drastic, like. Order food. Uh, <laughs> so we'll we'll figure that out um, for next time, and I think we have a good turnout here. So um, if you're interested in sponsoring and you know someone who wants to sponsor, let me know. Uh, cool. Any other questions before we get going? Like I'm kind of just winging this, so we can get in the groove over time. But if you don't have any questions, I was going to give a presentation, and we had two other people. I don't know if Cliff is here right now. That's you? Okay, great. So Cliff will present, so we only have two people. Uh, but let me know next time and we'll do a full three presentations. So, welcome. Cool. Uh, all right. I'm going to present something that we've been working on related to Angular. Um, Called Ionic. <coughs> Oops. Cool. So, uh, this is a big Angular project that we started. Uh, my company, Drifty, we're a local software company. We've got two other people here from, from, from our company. We basically built an open source framework around Angular. Uh, and this was back last summer, late summer, we started working on this. And I think we all kind of picked up Angular at this the same time, but like started really focusing on it because it started to gain a lot of momentum like the end of the summer of 2013, and we started playing with it and we realized like Angular was going to be huge, and there weren't really great tools for building mobile apps with it, uh, but we knew that that was going to become more and more of a thing that and we wanted to like kind of be leaders there. So we built an open source uh, mobile development framework on top of Angular, which I'm going to talk about today. So talked about myself already, you know me. So I'm guessing most of you are web developers, and I'm curious how many of you feel like you kind of missed out on like the mobile revolution. Like, you, like how many of you have never built like a native app? I'm kind of curious. So a lot of people. So you know, like the iPhone came out in 2007. Mobile developers are, are getting paid insane salaries. Like it kind of feels like you missed the boat if you didn't get in early. <laughs> but I'm here to tell you that you really didn't miss anything. That uh, <clears throat> you missed an era where we wrote multiple pieces of software to do the same thing for different platforms. Uh, we had people learning one single stack technology that they couldn't use on anything else. It was built on proprietary platforms like iOS and kind of Android, uh, Windows Phone. Um, but you couldn't, you weren't a full stack developer. Like if, 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 the, if the iPhone went away, like you'd kind of be screwed. Or if they updated something and you didn't have the skills for the next release, you'd be in a tough spot. So we had this era of the last seven or so years where native developers were kind of pigeonholing themselves, building on proprietary technology. Um, companies were having to spend a lot of money to build native apps that were slow to build. Like I said, you had to build multiple copies for different platforms. It's kind of a dark time in development. So if you miss out on that, I don't think you really miss anything. So if you're getting into mobile today, I think you're really right on time. It's a great time to be a mobile developer, especially with Angular. And this is because we have the concept of a hybrid app, which is a web app that runs as a native app in a native shell that lets you access the full power of the native layer, but building in a cross-platform, uh, open source fashion on top. You can use all the skills you already have as a web developer to build mobile apps, CSS, HTML, JavaScript. Um, <clears throat> 
can, like I said, you have, you can do anything that a native app can do. And you also have the full support of the industry, like Google uh, and all the other companies like Adobe that are betting on HTML5 winning on mobile. Uh, so if you're just getting into mobile development right now, it's an amazing time. And that's why we decided to uh, build our framework with Angular. So, uh, <laughs> so you may have heard that let's see. So you may have heard that hybrid apps suck too, uh, and I would say that was definitely the case uh, a few years ago. Um, but the reality is, the phones have gotten so much more powerful that it's not really the case anymore. I'm trying to find my slides, and they ran, they ran away on me. <laughs> uh, that was silly. Anyways, the point is, phones have gotten very, very fast. And you can now build awesome mobile apps with pure web technologies. So it doesn't suck. But the reason we haven't seen very many apps being built with web technologies like Angular uh, and you know, uh, Cordova and, and other things like that is we didn't have the tool sets to build these apps. We needed open source software that we could use to build native experiences with web technologies. We needed native UI components and layouts, and we needed an SDK rather than hacking together jQuery uh, and DOM manipulation. Um, we needed better tools for building these apps, and that's what Ionic is. It's an open source HTML5 development framework built on Angular that lets you build really awesome native style apps with web technologies. So like I said, it's web technologies you already know and love, best friends with Angular. <coughs> and uh, I want to talk a little bit more about why Angular is awesome and why we decided to build it. Uh, like I said, last summer we felt like it was really gaining momentum. But what kind of made me realize Angular was going to be huge was talking to all the developers at big companies that were starting to uh, have their bosses tell them they could use it. Teams were investing in it across the board in a way that was kind of unprecedented for a uh, web technology. So I think the last time that really happened was jQuery. And if you miss jQuery and you picked prototype or move tools, like, you know how that went. Like, <laughs> so, so I kind of looked at this and said, all right, Angular is winning. It's already won. Uh, you can see it in the Google Trends here. Uh, the search, the issues on Stack Overflow, um, the amount of uh, energy around this framework is just so much bigger than the competitors. Even if you don't want to believe it, it doesn't matter because you're wrong. Like Angular is dominating. Uh, yeah, I talk to people who are like, oh, it's still early. No, it's not early. Angular is winning. It's already won. So that's when we realized like, we need to go all in on this thing and build some awesome mobile tools. So I'm not going to talk about that. Uh, this is a presentation I use for like mobile groups. So let's get into what we actually built. So uh, this is uh, <coughs> uh, a few of our components. And this is just a CSS layout of a list. But some of the really cool stuff we did with Angular, um, it's kind of hard to see up there. But we built these directives, these custom directives, that let you uh, basically take simple markup and build a really powerful layout underneath. So we have this thing called ion-list, which is just an HTML tag powered by an Angular directive that loads up a complicated list layout with features like swiping, uh, deleting elements, reordering them. And all you have to do is use HTML. So the great thing about Angular is we've really taken the whole like directive stuff to heart and have encapsulated this powerful functionality inside of directives that work perfectly with your scopes. Uh, you, you can inject services um, in a very Angular friendly way. Uh, so this is another one that I think it really shows the power of, of Angular. So we built this multi-tabbed layout, um, which is a very common mobile layout. And all we have to do to specify each page is we just wrap it with the ion-tab um, <coughs> directive. And all the content gets automatically wrapped inside of a tab bar frame with multiple pages. Um, so we've done a ton of work. A lot of Angular code has been written um, just to make it really easy for you to build layout 
else like that. Uh, we've got things like side menus. Uh, again, similar concept. If you're a mobile developer, you'll you'll like that. Uh, Slidebox is another one that I think is really really incredible because uh, with the way that directives work in Angular, we've been able to uh, basically allow you to have arbitrary content, but then uh, manage it in a very uh, natural way. So if you specify three content slides, we automatically add three pages to a slide box that you can swipe through. So, and you can have uh, callback events, things like that, uh, very Angular friendly. Uh, we've got services that let you do things in a programmatic way, like pop open action sheets or mobile windows, like pop ups. And all you have to do to, to use these is inject the Ionic action sheet controller, or service, and call it from your controller, uh, and it'll just automatically pop up. And you can also do crazy things too, like pass in scopes and templates. Uh, it's very Angular friendly. Um, this is more of a uh, mobile thing, but we've got pull to refresh. Um, navigation, so I want to talk a little bit about navigation in an Angular, from an Angular standpoint. So there are basically two leading routing systems in Angular right now. There's ng-route and there's ui-router. Uh, ng-route is kind of really simple, but doesn't really do a lot. And so a lot of people end up going to ui-router when they want to do complicated nesting of states. Um, something we had to do to make very mobile style navigation was uh, <clears throat> we had to actually uh, make it possible to have like multiple independent history states. So we had to hack UI router to make it work. And we're actually going to be building our own like mobile oriented uh, routing system. So if you build mobile apps, hopefully you'll, you'll know the pain that is uh, routing on mobile because it's not linear. Like if you use a native app, the, the history states are independent. Like if you have a, a multi-tabbed layout, you'll have one history per tab. Uh, very common on mobile, very, very hard to do uh, with uh, <clears throat> web technologies in Angular by default. So there's a lot of work that needs to be done. The Angular team I know is working on a revamped routing system, but uh, that's something we spend a ton of time on. And UI router is great if you're using it. I hate the API. I think it's way too complicated. So I curse every time I have to use it. Um, so we're trying to change that. Uh, but yeah, um, Ionix MIT license. Uh, this is not relevant. Uh, so yeah, I just want to talk a little bit about where we are today. Like we just broke 5,000 stars on GitHub, so the project is really starting to pick up. Uh, which is exciting. Uh, we've got close to 60 contributors from around the world working on the project. Um, people are building with it, like 300 new projects started every day. So Ionic is becoming probably one of the more, I would say, top single digits Angular projects out there, open source wise, in terms of usage, which is really exciting. So uh, we, have, we get to work on this full time, which is, which is great. So, we're huge Angular fans, and uh, that's all I have. So, <laughs> I don't know if there's any questions. But yeah, I got a question. Yeah. Um, what's your, what, how do you do the revenue stream for your company? I guess you're letting yeah. the sell loose. We make money from, from it being free. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. We, the revenue model is, uh, is services on the back end. So, this will always be free, we'll never charge for it. We want everyone to use it because uh, because we're using Angular, it lets us do some really interesting uh, integration with backend stuff that isn't really being done right now. Um, you see this with Firebase, they're doing a great job making like Firebase and Angular like really compelling. So if you use Angular Fire, it, it makes Firebase better. Uh, so along those lines, like not, not not doing a Firebase competitor, but making services that fit in with Angular features like custom directives for A-B testing or uh, you know, services that make analytics really easily, things like that. That's where we're going to make money. We're starting to build some of that stuff out. Uh, but yeah, it'll just be normal software as a service model that we've been doing. What's really cool, we 
they just starting a project, a two phase project. Um, the app for desktops and then a companion app for phones. And this is basically Is this? Yeah. Um, would this work just for a plain old web app as opposed to a native app? It will. It's just, it's not really our focus. Uh, so we don't have great IE support, for example. So if people visit it on, on the Windows phone, it might not work so well, but we're, we're working on that. But we've really been focused on like Cordova, Wrap <laughs> apps, um, mainly because we felt like there were good alternatves for web apps, like web, mobile websites. Like jQuery Mobile has really great device support. It's got a toned down experience, uh, but we've been able to do more interesting things because we're focused on running like on the phone in the native shell. So, so what specifically, let, let's just say hypothetically, I jumped in to help you guys because you were two leaders and I wanted to make it focus on web apps. What, what, is, what would need to be done? Um, our routing system probably would want to be a little more resilient to like the back button and the browser chrome. Um, although it works pretty well with that. Right? Yeah, it works pretty well. So that would be one thing. I think the other thing would be kind of reducing our uh, WebKit prefixes in CSS and also some, sometimes the JavaScript uses them, um, which we're trying to be better about. Uh, I would say those are probably the main things. How heavy, how big a download is it? Um, I kind of forget. 100 KB? 100 KB? Yeah. It really doesn't matter. It's sitting in a native shit. Exactly. Native. One question. Does this support the Android uh, OS? Yep. So, so out of the box, you get Android and iOS. What other devices do you get? Uh, Windows Phone 8 is coming next. So. Maybe some other ones like Firefox, but it's just the phones aren't there yet. Yeah. Another question. Yeah. So this is Angular compatible enough. So if I had, say, a, a service to talk to Couch, DB, I could just inject it like I do on a desktop app, and, and it wouldn't care, right? Oh God. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> exactly. What well, I, I mean, that's what's so awesome about Angular. <laughs> you know, oh, these, these interfaces are well defined, so we're kind of we benefit from all their hard work. And so we I'm a complete newbie with phones. Okay. Yeah. So this is gonna like it goes a trip. But I mean that that's kind of that's why we built it. Like a lot of people have web development experience, and if you kind of, if you if you miss out, you know, the last seven years, you didn't become a native developer. My personal opinion is like that's okay because you like we're right back to where we were on desktop. You can build apps now with, with web technology. So I don't think you really needed to switch. Other questions? Yep. I was just wondering from the beginning of developing this project to now, how did your how did your perspective on Angular change? Well, something I don't really share with people is I was pretty much a total Angular newbie from the first line of code. Right? <laughs> so <laughs> my perspective changed dramatically, and actually we had some long lingering bugs because of me uh, for a while, like. <laughs> So, for example, like we, we were doing, we, we do a lot of like, uh, you know, Angular, you have like uh, isolate scope where you just do prototypal inheritance with scope. Well, we're using isolate scope on containers, which is a little different. Like, usually you'll use them on like a self contained like component that doesn't have any child elements. But we were kind of wrapping things and we were using isolate scope. So, that was causing a lot of trouble with, with other people's scopes that we only realized once we actually had other people building apps their own data. So little things like that, we really had to learn the hard way. Um, we've worked around them since, but yeah, that was, uh, I remember the first month was, was rough. Like I took a month and I just learned Angular and it was rough and I felt like I wasn't getting anywhere. The learning curve is pretty silly. <laughs> Where did you uh, start on before Angular? Um, <clears throat> what do you mean? Like framework wise? Yeah. Uh, I was in a bad club, okay. pretty heavily. I mean, I, I consider myself like full stack, like I'll do back end stuff too. Um, but front end, I was really into backbone. And I actually looked at some of my code yesterday or a few days ago that was in backbone. And it was awful. Like, I can't believe we used to program like that. Like, all these like jQuery calls, it's just it's stupid. <laughs> so I'm so glad that Angular came along. Yeah. Um, you talked about Oh, we're data release like 
Works well enough for production. Uh, I would say, I would say with Angular two on the horizon, I think Angular UI router will become irrelevant. Um, but I don't know when that's going to be, so that might be for a while. It, the, the API is really similar to ng route, so it's not a huge change. So I think it's totally safe to use it, and it, it works really well. So. Yeah. Well, tablets, uh, iPads, and split screen view and that kind of stuff. Yeah, we've got some tablet support. Um, so we'll, we'll like, pop up modals, like, that slide up will actually shrink to be, like, a box on tablets. Um, we've got a few other things that we need to do, like, split panes and stuff. So not full support for all the different layouts, but, I mean, all the, all the underlying code is the same, so. Uh, cool. Yeah, one more question, then we'll move on, but. Have you tried using web sockets at all with the Arata apps? Um, it all just made the best. So I haven't personally, but I've used like the Firebase Angular <coughs> Firebase. Firebase uses web sockets. So yeah, I mean at, at that layer it has really nothing to do with Ionic, so it should work perfectly fine. So cool. Well, I, if you have any more questions, like definitely feel free to email me. I, I want to move on and let uh, Cliff get up here and, and do his presentation. I need but, a couple minutes to get Okay, up. sure, sure. I, so. I guess, yeah, we can, we can keep going. But uh, yeah, thank you for listening. Do we want to do the hiring thing? Like, I don't know if anyone's hiring Angular developers or, you know what, but this is an opportunity to do that right now. Um, yeah. Uh, so it's not actually Angular, but I work for Logo.com. Uh, we do a lot of Rails stuff and some JavaScript stuff, hopefully we'll some other stuff. Uh, so if you're interested, I'll talk to you soon. Do you have a Oh, uh, that's massive. looking for angular people. See you in a month. <laughs> so while he's preparing, yeah. What's what's the problem with NG route? You're saying there's a problem with it? Um, <clears throat> so it, the first thing is that you can't do nested so, uh, let's say you have, um, okay, so you can only have one, like, ng view on the page. So for our tab thing, it wouldn't work, because we have an actual, like, navigation stack for each tab. So ng, ng route would, would just throw a thing. So it's kind of a non-starter for us. So if you're building, uh, let's say you're building a huge dashboard, and you want to have like complicated routing where you have like multiple modals slide up and you route inside them, like you you can't do that. It just doesn't work. So that's why people switch to the UI router because they will let you do that. Uh, the API is really complicated though, and it really tri trips people up, and it's something that that is holding back people from using uh, our routing system. So yeah, I would say if you want to do anything complicated, ng route is really kind of so, I'm sure some people here have had experiences with it too. But, but for simple stuff, it works well. You ready? Cool. All right. Cool. You want to come up here?
here? Yeah. Is that 18, right? It is. Okay, hopefully this is going to work. You never know. Sure. 